Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. I'm so excited. I can't stop smiling about this video. I have a positive, exciting UI builder slash workspace experience that I have to share with you. Let me do a little bit of explaining first. I'm in my PDI. It's right here behind me. And a lot of what you see on my channel is powered behind what I'm doing in my PDI. So I'm testing things, playing with things, experimenting with things. But even the content itself, I'm managing in my PDI. So let's take a look at my favorites menu, which has served as my workspace until now. I have ideas. I have the content that I'm actually publishing. I have my ServiceNow release notes app application that crawls the release notes, pulls stuff for Tokyo, Utah, and gives me stuff to generate content about. I have the tasks that I need to get done in order to get videos out there on the YouTube and different social media channels. I have the ServiceNow store highlights that crawls the ServiceNow store. I have a queue behind that and statistics. I have the episodes where I actually walk through the applications that are updated. All this stuff and I'm using my favorites menu to navigate through and I'm like, man, I just need a workspace. So let me show you how that experience has been so far. Um, I would come into UI Builder. I've done a couple of training things. I'm really scared and intimidated by UI Builder. Um, I just, it's like, I, I just can't get it in my head. But this is a positive video. I think you're gonna like it. But let me show you what I was doing. So I was coming in here. I was creating experience. Let's call it Justin's house. I'm not gonna put my apostrophe in there. I would make sure it had the roles that are part of my application because Justin's house is a scoped application in my PDI. So there's my admin, there's my user. And I would come in here and what I was doing was I was like selecting this UXR base experience shell. Let me tell you right now, do not, do not, do not do that. That is even more frustrating um, if, even if you get the workspace shell correct. Don't do that, use this workspace app shell instead. That's gonna be your friend um, in doing this. It's still not gonna work when what I'm about to show you here, but let me just show you what I've been doing. So I start with the workspace app shell, I hit create, and it goes and creates a workspace. And you would think, well, Justin, then just go create everything. And that's where the hard part starts. Is like, okay, I need a data source, and I need my pages, and my pages have variants, and all the components in those, the UI builder components need to be set up on all those pages. And it was just like a ton of work, and I just didn't have the time to sit down and figure it all out. I don't even know what's happening now. It's still thinking, there it goes. So this is what I'd start with, and I'd come in, I'd create a new page, I'd get started, and then get distracted and have to do something. Well, not anymore. This is what I want you to do. I hope you fast forwarded to this part of the video. I'm gonna close UI Builder. I'm gonna go to App Engine Studio. Let's go to my app, Justin's House, and I want to refresh that experience. There's Justin's House workspace. I'm gonna delete it. Okay, so I'm going to actually create the workspace from App Engine Studio, and this will blow your mind probably like it blew my mind. So there it is, it's gone. I'm going to add an experience. We're going to do a workspace. So I'm going to choose this workspace experience. Um, and while I'm talking about this, I have App Engine Studio and the related applications installed in my PDI, right? So I'm not in production, I'm not doing this anywhere else, but I'm gonna use this workspace one. Notice I could do catalog item, portal, mobile experience. I'm not talking about that today, just talking about this workspace. So let's go ahead and select that. Now notice, it's gonna walk me through a little bit differently than what you saw on UI Builder when I hit the begin here. Um, I'm gonna set it up just the same. I'm gonna call it Justin's house. It's gonna pull in the roles automatically that I had to go find in UI Builder when I was creating the experience there. Um, but that's okay. What's gonna be really neat when this loads up behind me is what happens after that initial setup page. Okay, so here's the setup page. I've got Justin's house. I'm not gonna use a description. I've got the URL. Notice it brought in those roles for me that I was talking about. So I'm just gonna click continue. And this is the game changer. Number one, it knew in my Justin's house application that the primary table was my content table. Think about YouTube content. And the secondary table, content tasks. These are the tasks that I need to do to get the content done. And uh, so that was brilliant. I, it figured that out automatically. But then I was like, hey, what about all that other stuff that was in my favorites menu? So I just searched for uh, what all my applications are prefixed with. Is this 41739? And look, I've got my crawl queue. I'll just do that again. And I'm gonna, probably gonna fast forward this so you don't have to hear me talk through each one of these, but I'm gonna add all of these tables to my workspace.
All right, guys, I think I've got it. So there you can see all of my secondary tables now I've added to my workspace. So I've got crawl queue, crawl stats, ServiceNow features, release note pages, the release note crawls, ServiceNow products that map to my features, my sitemap for the ServiceNow store, sitemap parts because it comes in parts, and then I have my SSH episodes and the applications in those episodes, and then all the store applications that are out there. Now, if you watch the time lapse, I'm actually moving past some of my Tokyo specific stuff. I didn't want that as part of this workspace, but that's it. This is where the magic's going to happen. I'm going to hit continue, and what happens next absolutely blew my mind. Okay, I'm gonna clip it out, but that took less than a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and click done on my workspace and come back into my application. And for just to be thorough, I'm gonna actually switch to home and then go back into my app so that you can see what all got created as part of that wizard that ran across the screen. All right, so my home page loaded up here. I'm gonna go back into Justin's house application. And let's take a look at what got created in the experience. Notice, first of all, um, I love this. It's like showing three different things, but look, there's actually 18 new or 18 experiences, uh, 12 or 13 of them new, but basically it created forms for all of my tables that are specific to the workspace. That was the first time I was like, oh wait, what's going on? Something's different here. I don't remember having all that in the previous experience that I had. And then there's Justin's house, uh, Justin's workspace. So let's go ahead and open that up. It's going to open up the workspace application configuration record. Um, and and then I can go choose to edit that in UI Builder. But I'm not even gonna do that on this video. I'm gonna actually go to the workspace and show you what blew my mind. So let's go here to the home page. I'm gonna to go to my workspaces and we should have now Justin's house. And the workspace is gonna pull up in a minute here. And there it is, there's the workspace. It comes complete with a home landing page and a dashboard. Right now I've just got Justin's house as my dashboard. I can go to my task, unassigned task, critical task. These seem to be based off the task table, so it is like a lot in there. There's my work, there's my content table, right? So there's uh, my podcast episodes and an idea I had about Zing to AI search and my SSH episode for this week. So that was pretty cool. Then I went on the list view and this is what I've been wanting all along. Let's go ahead and look at lists. There is everything that was in my favorites menu, but now I can get to it. So I can look at all my content that I might want to look at. I can go check on the crawl queue. I can go start looking at features for the next thing I want to record a video on. Uh, if I want to go start looking at release note pages and browsing through Utah Patch 1 and see what's on there, I can go do that. If I want to actually go work on an SSH episode, and this is where I got really excited, there's my SSH episodes. There's the content record that corresponds with it. That's stuff I had built out previously. But I open the SSH episode and I have no work to do, no additional things I got to do to go record an episode. So here's the episode title, the publish date, all that stuff I'd set up on my form in the classic UI or the legacy UI came over automatically to my workspace. There's my content record of my knowledge article, so I actually record the video, but there's the stats, and if I flip over here, there's my list of applications. So all I've really gotta go do here is add my filters that show my highlights, my fixes, my release notes fails, and so I am just blown away. This really jump starts me um, so that I have everything I need. If you go look, uh, we'll just go one more time before we uh, finish the video. UI Builder, if I open that workspace now, remember when I created it from UI Builder, I basically had a blank canvas. I was starting from scratch. Now, if I go into Justin's house in UI Builder, I've got a complete workspace built out. Look at this, everybody. I've got a home page, dashboards, analytics center, uh, the KB default, KPI details, my list page that I was just showing you, all the form pages for all my tables that I'm working with, a search, a simple list, and a visualization designer all built out. So now I just need to go in and start adding and tweaking and enhancing my workspace as opposed to building it out from scratch. So I don't know who's responsible for this at ServiceNow, but I am in love with it. Now I have, this is my first positive, truly positive experience with UI Builder. So you're gonna see a lot more of this on my channel. You're gonna see a lot more of me working from this. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in jumpstarting their workspace experience in UI Builder using App Engine Studio. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.